Okay, so following on from the theory session we did on breach delivery, breach birth, we're going to do now the practical demonstration. We find ourselves in a situation where we've got to support a woman who's about to give birth uh, with a breach presentation. So what would be the, one of the key principles we need to bear in mind? You don't touch the breech, it's hands off. Yes, we'd want to make sure that we maintained a hands-off the breach approach um, f as long as possible. Why, why would that be the case? Because depending, um, you, know, you don't want to stimulate the baby um, to, to complicate the delivery. Mm -hmm. um, plus you don't want to cause any trauma to mm -hmm. the baby, which mm -hmm. you could do by excessive handling. Okay, so so we keep our hands off the breach in order to minimise any damage to the baby and to, to to make sure that we don't make the birth any more complicated than it already might be. Okay, so so whilst you're prepared for the birth, what are you observing for? Looking for descent. Um, we would hope that the baby was in a sacral anterior position. Mm -hmm. Um, we're observing for the cord mm -hmm. that we wouldn't touch, mm -hmm. um, but primarily we're, we're watching for descent, hoping that the legs will free themselves and drop down. Okay, so at what point might we intervene? If we can see that the legs are delaying descent, we would, um, we would, free, we would free the legs. Okay, can we'd, you show me how you do that? Yeah, we would run our fingers down the, the femur to the popliteal fossa and we would apply popliteal pressure to flex the leg and release the leg which oh. would hopefully bring down the second leg. Okay and what will we do after we've done that? We're hands off again. Uh -huh. Okay so we go back to maintaining a hands off approach. What are we observing for? Descent. And we're hoping that the arms um, would be in a suitable right, the position so that they would drop down on their own as well. Okay. So what, what position are the arms in? What can you see about the arms? They're in the extended position. They're in the extended position, yes. So what does that mean? We need to bring them out um, uh, as we have to remove the legs. Okay. And what manoeuvre might we use for that? I've positioned my fingers on the bony aspects of the pelvis um, so that I'm avoiding the abdomen because I don't want to cause any damage to internal organs. I would then rotate the baby from the transverse position into the lateral position. I would then um, splint down over the baby's face and out. I would then reposition the baby into the transverse position and then if the second arm hadn't delivered I would repeat the manoeuvre on the opposite side to move the baby into the lateral position. Again splint the second arm, move down to the elbow joint, flex the arm and sweep down and out and then reposition the baby back into the transverse position and take my hands off again. Okay, so now the arms have been delivered, what are we waiting for next? We're waiting to see the nape of the neck um, so that we know when to step in to help the delivery of the head. Okay, and how are we going to manage the delivery of the head? What manoeuvre are we going to use to manage the delivery of the head? Um, we'd use the modified Mauricio Sloan's movement. Okay, can you show me that? Yeah. So I would take the weight of the baby on my arm and I need to insert my fingers positioning one on the chin and two on the malabone, malabones um, making sure that I'm not poking the baby in its eyes and then with my leading hand position two fingers on the scapula and I want one finger on the occiput and as the baby descends I flex the head slightly 
and deliver the baby up and over onto mum and we would continue as normal we'd wrap baby uh, make sure he's okay we'd clamp and cut the cord 